Recently, I've been having a ton of fun with this raid card and M.2 to PCI Express expansion. I've used it on a whole host of different things from trying SSDs in raid on my PlayStation 5 to trying out a GPU on my PS5, which you should go check that video out right up there, but also trying to see if putting a GPU on this card would work on a PC. And at the time, I just thought this is a fun little weird use case that nobody's ever going to really need until a lot of you in the comments brought up the fact that the perfect use case for this is putting this on a laptop. Not only could you get SSD expansion, but you could also potentially get a higher end GPU on a crappier laptop that you've picked up. So that is the premise today. We're going to be taking a look at an M.2 expansion with three SSDs on it, connecting that to a GPU and seeing, do we get the SSDs and the GPU to register on the laptop? Is it going to be something in between? We'll have to find out after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by ButcherBox. ButcherBox is actually a service that I've been using for well over a year now to have all of my meat delivered straight to my door. It's the easiest, simplest way to make sure that you have enough meat for your monthly needs by having ButcherBox show up right at your doorstep. They have incredibly quality meat, 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood. We don't typically get the seafood every once in a while. We'll change our box to get it, but normally we do enjoy the chicken and beef that gets delivered, including whole chickens. Just had that this past week. And their goal is to make sure that high quality meat is accessible to as many people as possible. And they're able to deliver the best products for less than $6 per meal with free shipping. It's super convenient. It actually does save us money because meat's stupid expensive here in Pennsylvania compared to going to the grocery store. And if you use our link in the video to description to sign up right now for Butcher Box. They were having a free turkey promotion for Thanksgiving, but those completely sold out. So if you sign up using the link in the video description, you'll get a free pack of bacon in your Butcher Box and $20 off your first box. So free bacon, 20 bucks off using our link in the video description. It's how my family gets our meat delivered to us. And you could potentially do that by clicking down below. Big thanks to Butcher Box for sponsoring today's video. So I'm not 100% sure, but I think the last time that I did this, we had some issues when I tried to use the GP and the SSD at the same time, maybe not because of bandwidth issues, but rather I think this RAID chip was overheating. When I tried to touch it afterwards, it was scalding hot and I realized that I never put the cooler back on. So we're gonna make sure that we put the cooler back on to see how that works. And big shout out to Sabrent who saw all of the stupid crazy experiments that I was doing and said that they would send me four of their Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus SSDs for me to try this experiment out. So first step is unloading the laptop and getting access access to that M.2 port. This is gonna be long and boring, long and boring long and boring. So the laptop in question that we're going to be using today is the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. I picked this up for the charity stream that I did recently because it had an Ethernet port, had a Ryzen 5 chip, and it had a GTX 1650, which meant that I could use RTX voice. But it doesn't have an RTX GPU in here. It's only a GTX GPU. And the GPU that we're going to be combining it with today is the RTX 3080 Ti to see if we could potentially unlock some ray tracing when other Otherwise, this laptop couldn't support it. Now, one of the key bottlenecks that we're actually going to be running into here that we weren't experiencing on the other drives is that no laptop, as far as I'm aware, besides the highest end laptops that have desktop parts in them, have PCI Express 4.0 as an option for their M.2 drives. They're all PCI Express 3.0. Maybe the upcoming Alder Lake launch of Intel's new laptop CPUs might change that. We'll get PCI Express 4.0 on that but every laptop that I'm aware of will only support PCI Express 3.0. So we are going to experience some bottlenecking here when it comes to the PCI Express speed because we're only gonna be getting a PCI Express 3.0 by four lane, which then has to be divided in between all three SSDs and the GPU. But we'll find out if it's faster than the GTX 1650 that's in this bad boy. Two very boring minutes later. There we go, finally. Jeez, that took forever. Now that we have this open, what I can see is that this only has one single M.2 port right here, which we're gonna have to take the SSD out for. Just kidding, I lied. It has a second M.2 port right there. So <laughs> in order to mitigate this, I actually had it set up so that this drive right here has an operating system installed on it. And to give it the best chance, you know what? We're gonna take out the primary drive and just replace it with this RAID card so that there's no interfering that's happening on with this actual drive 
drive that's in here right now. So in case you're brand new to this crazy series that I've been doing, the way we get this to work is I have an external power supply that's set up right here, which has a jumper cable to turn the power supply on, regardless of whether or not it's connected to a CPU that's gonna be on. Then we're gonna plug the PCI Express power connectors into the GPU to make sure that turns on. And then from there, we also plug in the SATA power that's necessary to run these M.2 to PCI Express riser cables. So here's riser cable number two, which is gonna be for the GPU. And then riser cable number one, which is gonna be plugged directly into the motherboard. It's gonna get power, both plugged in. And now this M.2 adapter, which is PCI Express 4.0, is going to this RAID card, which has three Sprint Rocket 4 Plus one terabyte drives. And then it's connected to yet another M.2 to PCI Express drive. And in order for me to pull this off, I had to order a second one of these M.2 adapters from AliExpress. And in case you want to support crazy videos like this that I do here, you can check out our Patreon and our float plane, which will be linked in the video description. Your monthly money helps to make sure that I can actually continue to do crazy things like this. So we have all of that plugged in. The GPU is plugged in. The SSD is plugged in. I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. I'm going to put this on its carriage right there. I'm going to open the screen. As I mentioned before, we have to put the cooler back on this thing. Okay, now everything I believe is officially plugged in. Now the thing that I'm not 100% sure of is Windows going to allow us to use the 3080 Ti that's right here without a display going out to it. Can that actually display out to the internal laptop display? I'm going to guess probably not. I'm not 100% sure how this works, but in case that doesn't work, I can get a portable monitor set up and we can plug the 3080 TI into that. So we've got all of this set up. If we boot into Windows at all, that's going to be an initial success because the only Windows drive is on here on this RAID card. So that means that it's actually working. Now here's the risky bit. We're going to plug in the laptop. We're going to turn on the laptop. Got power to the laptop. We should not do that. I forgot to turn on the power supply. Hopefully I did it just in time to see what's going on. Uh, checking media is what it says. That makes sense. It said error. Checking media error. Oh, what does that say? Default de boot device missing or boot failed, insert recovery media, then select boot manager, then choose a new boot. Yes, okay. Let's see if it even pops up in the BIOS. Select boot drive, the network? I don't think that's right. Enter, yeah, that's not right at all. Yeah, it just says checking media on the laptop. Okay, it's saying only the network card is registering. Maybe that's because I forgot to turn on the power supply for everything before I turned on the laptop. So now we have it set up. Oh, the power turned off on this, at least on the RAID card. The fan stopped spinning. The GPU is still going full bore though. Okay, power supply's on. This is connected down here. Let's go ahead and now turn on the laptop and see if that fixes anything. Oh, heard a fan spit up. Oh, Windows loading. <laughs> oh, yes. Is it working? Oh, that's the Windows loading screen right there. Getting devices ready. Yes. <laughs> oh, frick yes. Oh, no way. Oh, it works. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get the portable monitor out because I can't see a single thing that's happening while I'm also trying to talk to you guys. I'm also gonna be very gentle with this stuff, but it's booting from the raid card. Hot dog. Actually, I'll just sit in front of it and see if I can get this working. Okay, let's see what task manager says the devices are. What do we have here? Performance, we've got Disc one, which is the Sprint Rocket 4 Plus. That makes sense. We've got disc two, which is the next Rocket 4 Plus and all three Rocket 4 Pluses are showing up. So let's go ahead and just quickly benchmark it. It should be at PCI Express 3.0 speed. So I'm expecting like three, three and a half gigabytes per second out of this bad boy, which would make a ton of sense. But what I didn't see in Task Manager was any sort of, yep, there we go, three and a half gigabytes per second, any sort of display adapter. <gasps> it registered, oh my gosh, it's there. I'm gonna show you guys. Freaking look at this. The RTX 3080 Ti is showing up and the integrated graphics is just the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. <gasps> I love it. And we're getting three and a half gigabytes per second read, which is exactly perfect. That's where we want to be. Okay, before we get into the games, I wanna see what happens when I try to transfer one file to another. So we need to make sure that I create a drive, a uh, new volume on one of the other Rocket 4 Pluses. Let's make that the E drive, that's totally fine. Don't really need anything else. Okay, I wanna see how long it takes to copy one game to the other. So games, Cyberpunk, let's copy that. How big is that? That's 61 gigabytes. Let's copy that file over to another drive. Let's see. Oh, we're getting, we're getting 
1 to 1.5 gigabytes per second transfer speed, 2 gigabytes per second it's averaging right now. That's pretty gosh dang good. This one's reading at 2.3 gigabytes and then this one's writing at 2.2 gigabytes. That is, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. My goodness, I think what was happening last time was it was overheating. So now that that has been resolved, my goodness, it like a minute, we transferred the entirety of Cyberpunk from one drive to the other. That is, that's phenomenal. So let's go ahead and load up Cyberpunk and see how it performs. Will it load on the Microsoft Display Adapter or will it load on the RTX 3080 Ti and send that internal signal into the laptop display. Oh, it failed. You don't you don't say it didn't work. Oh boy. All right, let's try again. Play. Oh, that was further, but it, it broke again. That makes sense. Who knew Cyberpunk 2077 still doesn't work a year after launch. Okay, Steam is not loading, so I'm gonna restart the computer and see if we can get that to work. That was a heck and fast reload. Well done. All right, let's boot up Microsoft Def MSI Afterburner. Do we have the 3080 Ti showing up in Task Manager now? No, we do not. Maybe I need to reinstall the drivers. That's also a possibility. Let's see, St Steam does load now. Okay, great. Let, we've got The Witcher 3 locally installed. Let's hit play on that. It says it's running. Oh, the game popped up. Can I go into it? I can't. Okay, now the question is what's actually running this? Is it the 3080 Ti? Uh, that frame rate says 50 FPS in the menu. So I'm gonna guess it's not the 3080 Ti. Uh, let's set it to ultra because it should be able to handle that. It does not give me resolution here. That's intriguing. Okay, so we have only display mode, but no resolution. Odd. Oh, what's the game doing now? Uh-oh. It oopsie doopsed. Oh, game crashed. That's no bueno. That's not what I wanted to see. All right, let's try Cyberpunk this time. Is it working better after a restart? Hey. Oh, there's the icon down there. Oh, it is doing better after a restart. Look at that. Yes, connect to the, ne oh my gosh. Yes, connect to the network, so that's fine. Red Engine, yep, that's great. I have a feeling it's running on the integrated graphics in the Ryzen 5 processor that's on the inside here and that it's not actually using the RTX 3080 Ti. I have a stool, why don't I sit on it? Oh yeah, that looks horrible. 17 FPS in the menu. I'm gonna guess it's not the 3080 Ti. Okay, settings, graphics, yeah, we can only go up to high, not ray tracing. So it's not detecting an RTX GPU that's in here. Cancel those changes. Let's just go ahead and load the game and see what happens. It's running 1415 FPS. So it might be using the GTX 1650 that's on the inside here. Okay, I've seen enough. What I need to see now is if we put in an external display what happens? So here we have my handy dandy, trusty ROG portable monitor going to plug in to the micro HD, mini HDMI point. I never know which one's which. And then plug that into the HDMI of the 3080 Ti. Do we get a display out? No, maybe display out anything. I'm gonna check display settings back here. Yeah, that monitor is not showing up on the display settings at all. So the question, that I have now is should I try to double reinstall the NVIDIA drivers and will that potentially do anything? Because the 5600X is being picked up perfectly. Now we have, oh, now the 1650 is registering, but the 3080 Ti is not. That bugs me. Why is the 3080 Ti not registering? Was it installing stuff in the background? Okay, cause the 3080 Ti is definitely showing up in device manager. Oh, now it has a little error thing. What's, what's going on with that? This device is not working properly because Windows cannot load the drivers required for the device. Okay, so what happens if I disable the 1650 drivers or disable that device? Okay, that's turned off. I don't quite want to disable the, th the AMD graphics just yet, because that might be powering the screen. But reinstalling the 3080 Ti drivers, let's see what happens. Oh, the 3080 Ti, oh, but it brought the 1650 back online, but the 3080 Ti now doesn't have any issues. And the fans are spinning on the 3080 Ti. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, Nvidia installer has finished. The 3080 Ti doesn't have an error message anymore. Let's disable the 1650. 1650 is now disabled. Uh, I'm gonna try to turn the portable monitor back on and see if that does anything. Display settings. Nope, it's not showing up in display settings just yet. 
and nothing's happening on the portable monitor. Okay, but the fans are spinning on the 3080 Ti besides the first one, but Task Manager is only registering the AMD graphics. So what's gonna probably be a stupid move is I'm gonna disable the device on the AMD graphics. Oh, oh, that, we still have display. It just turned down the brightness tremendously and now the scaling's all weird. Whack. Do we have any GPU showing up in here? We do not. That's odd. I'm gonna unplug the HDMI port. Gonna plug it back in. There we go. That's plugged in now. And try to turn back on the portable monitor, see if anything happens. Nothing. Nothing's showing up. So according to Device Manager, we have both of those GPUs disabled. The only GPU that's enabled that could potentially be pulled from is the 3080 Ti. So let's go back to Cyberpunk since that's the one that was working perfectly. Oh, and now all of the fans are spinning on the 3080 Ti as soon as I tried to do that, but the game crashed. What does the Witcher do now? The fan spinning could have been a coincidence. Okay, so the game is running even though everything is disabled. Uh, video, do we have resolution or anything popping up? Nope, it's just ultra settings, full screen, all of that kind of stuff. Saying we're getting 60 FPS in the menu. Game's loading, game's loading. It's flashy loading. Oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, screen turned off. We got no screen. That didn't look good. Um, what? That was weird. Can I alt tab? Will the screen work? Oh, the screen does work. Okay, we're good. We're still, screen's not dead. It was just a weird software hiccup. Task manager. I don't know, man. We're not picking anything up in here. Uh, I'm gonna restart the computer one more time and see what happens. Okay, the screen's brighter now. Did the Ryzen graphics get re-enabled? They did not, but the 3080 Ti is, still, is now saying it has errors again, which is not right. Update the driver. Yeah, it is. Don't have issues. Scan for hardware changes. Nope, you're broken. General, Windows has stopped the device because it has reported problems. What problems? There are no problems. Windows just work. Okay, what happens if we disable that device too? Nothing. Okay, great. What if I enable it now? Will it just work? Okay, yeah, no error messages there. Yep, device is working properly. Are you sure about that? Okay, because I've had issues with this portable monitor in the past, I'm gonna go get a different monitor and see if that one works. Okay, no more portable monitors, only real monitors now. Okay, real monitor, you're powered on, great. Now you plug into the 3080 Ti. Does that work? HDMI one, you're gonna give me no signal, aren't you? No signal, gosh dang it, okay. So now, let's take the HDMI and plug it into the laptop. Okay, HDMI plugged into the laptop. What does that do now? No signal. Is that because the 1650 is disabled? Yeah, it's not working. Okay, if I enable the 1650, will that give me display out? Enable the device? Or do I have to enable the AMD driver? And that's what, that probably did it. Yep, okay, so the AMD one is the one that's pushing out to the display. Hmm, so it up Cyberpunk again, see what happens. Oh, we're getting 120 FPS in the menu. Go over to graphics. Yeah, no ray tracing being detected, so it's clearly not on the RTX 3080 Ti. Okay, same frame rate there. I'm just, I'm so confused why it won't display out. I guess it's not sending out the display signal over the 3080 Ti. I guess, so the remaining question that I have then is if I can't use the GPU for gaming, can I use it for anything else? Can I use it for mining? Is it actually registering as a GPU on the system or is it just completely dead to me? Completely, completely, completely. Okay, devices, what do we have? We have the 5600H and the integrated graphics. We do not have the 3080 Ti showing up at all. Yeah, it's just, it's not disable device, yes enable device. The card is being picked up by Windows. It's just not being used by anything, which is intriguing. Let's shut down nice hash and load it back up and see if it gets detected that way. Nope, still no 3080 Ti. Okay, but what happens when I enable the 1650? Does it automatically pop up? It doesn't. Okay, I have to reset it, right? Yep, two GPUs. Yep, we've got the 1650 and the integrated, but we don't have the 3080 Ti. That is, that is really intriguing. I'm very intrigued by this. Okay, well now I have no answers and only questions of why, why is it like this? Um, so if you have thoughts, sound off down in the comments. I have one more thing I wanna try. 
which is get it off the RAID card, eliminate the SSDs entirely, and just connect the GPU to the other M.2 port and see if that works. Load up Windows, see if we can get the 3080 Ti, if it has the full bandwidth. Maybe because it's on this secondary card, that might be the issue here. It's clear it's being recognized by Windows, but maybe it doesn't have enough bandwidth to do anything? I don't, I don't really have a great explanation, honestly. Okay, so let's try that experiment. Shut down the computer, shut down the other power supply, all the power's off, unplug the laptop, take out this M.2 riser. I think I would be less confused if it didn't detect the 3080 Ti at all. Like if it didn't show up, I'd be like, oh, it can't do a riser to a riser. And that's why we're having problems. But that is clearly not the case. So let's take out the drive that has the operating system already on it. Take out the M.2 GPU riser, move it over so that it can be plugged in. Oh man, so many cables. I'm a snag. Whee! Ah. Plug you into the secondary M.2 port, which doesn't have any mounting way of getting that done. All right, let's flip this bad boy over. So now the GPU is technically installed. We've got the SSD installed as well. Turn on the laptop that turns on the GPU. That's 100%. That's exactly what we want to see. All right, we're loading into the laptop. No problem. That's all good to go. Head over to device manager. What do we have? Display adapters. We only have a 1650. We don't even have a 3080 Ti this time. It's getting power from the laptop, which is why it turned on in the first place. But now it's not being detected under display adapters. Scan for hardware changes. Anything. Not a single thing. My goodness. Goodness. Okay, so now it's not being detected by Windows. What if I swap the M.2 sections? Will it work then? Because the, the M.2 riser is clearly receiving some sort of signal from the laptop, which is why it's turning on when the laptop's on and it's turning off when the laptop's off. And now I'm gonna shut down the power to it so that, wow, okay. Unplug the laptop. Yep, unplug that. That's good to go. Okay, SSD goes on the other section. M.2 is installed, ready to go. Power supplies on, laptop on, GPU on. That's exactly what we saw last time. Now, will we load in the windows with the M.2 being on the other slot? Ah, we will not. Maybe it has a defunct second M.2 slot. Yeah, it says checking media, default boot device missing. Okay. Oh, that's because it slid out. <laughs> Whoops, not supposed to be like that, okay. Now it's actually plugged in. How do I, there's no way for me to screw it down, so I just have to kind of leave it up. There we go, now it's loading. Oops, I are we not getting display because it's loading to the GPU? Oh, no, that was not it. Although I'm gonna plug in the GPU anyways. HDMI one, are we getting anything? Device manager, what do we have? The 3080 Ti is not showing up now. It's clearly working, but it's not working. Oh man. So when this was connected to the RAID card, the RAID card was able to get it to show up. But now that it's connected to the laptop directly, it won't show up. I'm really confused. I don't know what's going on. Huh. Okay, well, we got the RAID card successfully working. All three Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus drives showed up. The GPU is clearly communicating with the laptop, but it's not enough to run a game and it's not enough to actually mine on, even though it's showing up. I am stumped. I'm a, I'll do some research on this, see if I could potentially take this any step further to get the GPU to work on the laptop. But if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. Again, in case you wanna help support stupid projects like this, you can support us over on Patreon and Floatplane, where on Floatplane we release our videos early access and without ads so that you can watch them before everybody else. But with that being said, kinda done with this series, unless we can figure out the GPU thing. I do have another PS5 SSD video planned. It's just that it's gonna cost about $5,000 and I don't have that kind of money just yet. Uh, so I'm trying to work with sponsors. I'm trying to figure it out, but if it does work, it's gonna be crazy. And if it doesn't work, I will be out $5,000. So get subscribed maybe for that if I could pull it off. But with that being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll be back with some other crazy experiment at some time in the near future. Cheers.